Well, overall, today, uh, kind of a mediocre day. I don't know if the track was flat or maybe it was the horses didn't train on Saturday. The wind or cold, I, I have no idea, but um, we had a lot of, well, how you say, uh, phone don't start, a lot of mediocrity, I think, today, and it wasn't that the horses weren't ready to do what we were doing. Uh, I think the wind sucked a lot of the life out of them in the first set. Uh, I had made a break with Johan, and I'll touch on that right now, actually. Johan made a little break halfway down the back stretch, and he was just switching gears and ex looking to accelerate, and he made that little break. He never runs, especially, uh, he just shouldn't say he never runs. He never runs in that spot, ever. And he was very comfortable. I just got off the phone with Steve, who owns uh, a big chunk of Johan with me. And, you know, he was concerned. He said, is he getting ornery? Is he getting bad? No, quite the opposite. Johan was very quiet today. Followed along well, did his work well. They were really starting to rock up front. And I was not going to be able to catch them. You know, I, I can't, I couldn't go fast enough into the turn, through the turn, down the lane to catch up and catch those two horses. Knocked down Drag Out and Beach Boutique were flying. And then the wind hit them coming out of the turn. That would have sucked the life out of me right there anyway. So, um, a little odd that he made a break there, but... He's a two-year-old trotter. They're going to make breaks. He was doing his work very, very well before he did that. He's not on line or anything. He's doing everything right. Now, I will say that he trotted a half in 105 after. Um, and he did put a step in in almost the identical spot. So I don't know whether he's switching his leads right in the middle as he started to trot harder and picked at himself somewhere that I couldn't see or what he did. But he did get out of gear a little bit um, in the same place the next time around, but we were flying at that point. I let him really roll the last half after that break. So not really a big deal. I'm going to call it, um, as I do from time to time, anomalous and say that I'm not really that worried about that break in that place. I don't feel that that's a place he's susceptible to breaks any given time. He did make a break today. I don't expect him to make a break there again. And we'll call it a learning experience for both him and myself. So that's Johan. Um, I do have, I don't know, 15 or 16 other horses I thought were good. As we got to about the fifth or sixth set, I said to James, I I have only a few horses I thought were really good today. You know, they overcome. It's been warm here all week, and it was really cold this morning. I went, I had summer gloves on. I switched out for my winter gloves um, right after the first set, as James did also. Uh, I had a balaclava on. I think it was plus five before the wind. With the wind, it was right around zero, I think, this morning. Um which really caught me off guard. All week it was supposed to be 17 and 8 in the morning, just this beautiful day, and it just turned out to be a horrible, miserable day. The sun came out as the last two sets were going. So it wasn't a partially sunny day. It was a mostly cloudy day, and it was very cold. So a lot of the horses were not just, they just weren't that great today. Factor in a lot of things that, you know, there's a lot of variables. They didn't train on Saturday. It was cold. The track might have been a little dead. We could go on and on. At the end of the day, there was a lot of horses that were just okay today. They did their work okay, but the standouts, not that many, especially in the first few sets. I thought enduring strength was absolutely awesome today. I thought that uh, globe trotting looked very, very good. Um, we'll just start from the top. And these were all in, I guess, in alphabetical order. And I have a couple of stars on them. They didn't train well, but I want to tell you why. Most of them, I don't know why. But now, phone. Uh, but there were a couple of them. I can tell you why. So we'll roll through them as we get started also. Yeah, why don't I start with them? So we talked about Johan, what took place with him. Yours, if you want it, made a break at the start. James actually, and I told some people they were dumping shares and getting his shares. And I had uh, commented to one of our clients that still owns some shares. I said, yours, if you want it, is crazy. I'll give you that. He's crazy. He's not usually just runs for no reason. He's pretty sure-footed when he's trotting. The problem is getting him moving in the right direction. He is a goof. And um, uh, this is a colt with, with clearly a wealth of ability. And I don't think he's one that will just squander it doing stupid shit. But at the same time, that's exactly what he's been doing the last week and a half. That will begin to come to an end tomorrow. So yours, if you want, and end up going a very fast mile in the jog cart after he made that break. Now, you didn't get to see that mile, so I brought that to the attention, and I will, of the of the entire ownership group before they start jumping in the lifeboats and burning their money. Um, you can sell them if you want. This is an incredibly high-speed, very fast colt, 
and I'm sure he'll be fine. This isn't something we haven't seen before. This isn't something we can't deal with. A little frustrating to deal with it right now, but it will be dealt with. Yours if you want it when a big mile in the jog cart after he made a break. Um, and that's worth uh, that's worth mentioning. Utopian. I look pulling up in Utopian's way back. This is cold. I went a mile in like 213, 214 with last week. He can fly. I said to the French guy, just on, what happened? Oh, I put a couple of steps in. I just stop him. Don't do that. He put a couple of steps in last week. I hit him a swat over the arse with the whip. The horse uh, brushed up against his knee and put a step in. It's not a big deal. You know, and certainly don't ever, just don't do that. Anyway, Utopian's going to train tomorrow. He's training another mile. Tomorrow, I'm going to go a mile probably in uh, 15 or 16 with him. Uh, today, I don't even know what he did. But I know when I pulled up with the horse I was in there with, I was a light year ahead of him. So he will be training in the morning. Wiggle Delight, she, if you noticed, she, what is with this phone today? Uh, she made a break uh, on James the first lap, caught up and was really good after. James said every time he snugged her, he could hear a click and then she'd get out of gear. So that is cross-firing. There's a number of ways to fix it. It's not a very hard thing, especially for a talented filly like her. Fairly remedial. Um, we won't even have to go old school. Like we're talking maybe a half round, half sweat shoe with a little trailer, maybe a set of brace bandages behind. That won't happen again. Very easy to fix. And the reason this hasn't come up a lot is because Mario guards his horses. And I caution them against doing this when you just sit there, move over easy, advance easy, and away you go. That's teaching them nothing. You have to put them in a position where you do have to get them grabbed up and snugged up in the middle of a hole, in the middle of a race, remove them, have to let somebody go. This nice, easy, fluid motion. Yeah, when's that ever happen? Ever in a race? Uh, never. So um, I think when you double her up, she just gets up on top of her quarters a little bit. Not rare. This is a very common uh, common thing and it's very easy to fix I'd message the blacksmith after and said just a little half round half swedge with a little trailer on her maybe we'll even put a set of brace bandages on her behind just for a little while and by the time she gets to the races we can probably switch back to a full swedge shoe and there won't be any problem for those of you who think I'm speaking Klingon you don't know what I'm saying a full swedge shoe is a steel shoe now as you can imagine the steel shoe would be rounded they bevel that I think it's called beveling bevel that out and that groove leaves a ridge on the inside of the shoe up a little and the outside of the shoe a ridge right around the whole shoe that's called a full sweat shoe now a half round half sweat shoe has that beveled, beveled red ridge on one side and the other side is that just that round shoe half round half sweat shoe now they'll slip off of the round part you put that on the inside of the hind foot and they'll use that outside to grab, and the theory is that this will make them pace wider. That little trailer, when they land on the ground, it lands a little bit, they stick a little longer, and it helps them push off a little bit. Theoretically, it doesn't happen with all horses, but this is common practice for horsemanship. So you'll go from that full swedge shoe, that theoretically would give you that straight lift off and land, to a half round half swedge with a trailer that may give you a little more distance to the outside. What's waiting for the horse up there is the quarter of its foot. Obviously, if it lifts off a little wider, lands a little wider, no more cross-firing. That's the idea behind that, and that's what we'll do for, for uh, Wiggle Delight. Very remedial thing, uh, Horsemanship 101. So, uh, Wiggle Delight made a little break. I don't suspect she'll do that again now that we know what's going on. Utopian, I'm going to train him tomorrow. I suspect he's fine. Yours, if you want it, is going to start into a strict regiment, regiment of some... Uh, headgear. He's going to get a little birch bit put in his mouth, a brain cord on his head. We're going to go to a Pelling pacifier, a Murphy blind on the outside. He always wants a duck to the outside. Murphy blind, Pelling pacifier, uh, Crick Davis, a birch bit, or sorry, a birch bit and a brain cord with a snugger martingale. Uh, these are all just tools to stop him from doing what now he's become accustomed to doing. These are habits that we can, should be able to break without too much difficulty. We'll see if, uh, if that happens in the near future. So those are the issues that we had today, aside from some other minor breaks, and I just saw one pop onto my, head, my page here. Susie K, I had said in the drone video, her hobbles were just simply a little bit too long. I had had Steve pull them up, but they were still too long when she pulled up. I would know that if I was sitting behind her. I just couldn't go with her today. So little Susie made a little break. No concern there. Any little minor issues here? Bend over, trot a good... Uh, no, no, no. Canadian Titan jumped on her foot yesterday. A little bit of blood there. She was a little bit tender on it. She's a big softy. 
she needs to toughen up a little bit. Uh, I trained her today. She made a break. Really got to clean up those heels. They got burnt from the bell boots last week. Just a bad week for Canadian Titan, but that will change in about five days. We'll fix all that up. Uh, Classic Con made a break. He's going to be going tomorrow. He's going to find himself doing a little extracurricular activity tomorrow, as will Libero Hanover. Yours if you want it. Supper's ready. See, I'm doing my video at supper time to get Mommy it for wants you. you to come in. I'll be in in just a second. Thank you. Okay. I'm in my office. So I j literally just got home at 4 o'clock. Now it's 4.55. So uh, where are we at? Libero Hanover Utopian. Those four are going to be doing a little extra work tomorrow. I just want to get a look at Libero Hanover. This horse made two breaks in a row now. I don't know why. Uh, Classic Con, I don't know what the hell he did today, but I'm going to find out tomorrow. Yours if you want it. Bad, att bad acting. I'm not going to say bad attitude because he's very fast. Bad acting. We'll get to the bottom of that. And Utopian, I think Driver Eric, he just made a little. He didn't know the horse well enough. Not really his fault. We'll train him tomorrow. Uh, I'm just going to sc scour the page here a little bit more. Make sure we didn't miss anything. Shazam looked good. And I'll go over all these horses on the weekend with you also. Um, we'll train them again on Friday. I will be leaving Friday morning, but I'll have updates. Uh, no other mistake. Just for me and you. She's not on my list. Went very... I'm adding her to my list. I want to talk about her. Talk about her in a minute. Uh, overdue mission. Made a break, which not new, right? She's done that before. Then James says pulling up. Shouldn't have taken that Murphy blind offer. Now, James has the clearance to make such equipment adjustments, but I really wish he would have asked. I would have told him, don't do that. And the problem is, when you have a Murphy blind and a roller burr on the inside of that filly, she coasts out. She runs out. She gets rough in the straightaways. You gotta have the hobbles on her properly. You have to set her up properly. Without that Murphy blind, she makes breaks in the turns. You can't have this filly running in on the turns. Now, I'm not gonna train her today because I trained her the other day and I thought she was great. But um, that will be a James error. That's gonna be an E James if it was baseball because uh, that filly should not have had that Murphy blind removed. But it's done now. Overdue mission made a break. I'm not concerned. I'm a little upset because I wanted to gather speed, right? More good miles than bad. And uh, overdue mission did not need that break today. Uh, that's for sure. Neither, and I'm just as guilty. I didn't change equipment, but uh, obviously the Dio filly, Spirit of Dio, was absolutely flying. Did her work the whole mile. Just had to hold her together, watch her move her when I could. And down the lane, she was absolutely flying. I got to the turn and I'm like, Eh, about a 20% chance she's going to make this turn. Had I gone into the turn wide, I think I could have let her coast down. I would have made that turn. But because I come up the inside of everybody, I couldn't go anywhere. I was now on the inside. She put one step in. I'm like, geez, good girl. You know, you caught yourself. She got to the point of the turn and rolled off. Not a big deal. I know that that uh, Paul and a couple of the owners are like, well, when are we getting her to Mohawk? Just relax. It's not the end of the world. She's learning to do her work. And I know everybody out there says, oh, she's learning to make breaks. Horses don't learn to make breaks. Horses like her, especially good horses, they try not to. And I've said this a million times, and some people don't like this. I do believe that horses need to face some adversity. And her not being able to get around a half as good as she could get around a big track, not the end of the world. Her races don't start till July 1st, and it's a long, long year. This filly's just fine. There's no issues. There's no wrinkles to get out of her. You saw how fast she trotted down the straight down the stretch in the, in the training mile after a mile and a half today. You saw it. I saw it. No issues with spirit, spirit of Dio. That I'm certain of. Uh, what else? Look quick. Rose Run Valiant. I need to go with this guy another couple of times. Straighten him out good. Uh, sometimes things happen. Was a little wishy-washy, wasn't he? My biggest concern was he was knuckling over quite a bit. Needs to be shod. He needs to be on a three-week rotation. Not four. Three. And maybe Baycox him. So we're going to Baycox. Sometimes things happen. Um, and I need him shortened up behind. His toes were a little long. Horses that are prone to knuckling over cannot go with long toes. We need those chopped off and shortened up. So uh, that will be a blacksmith thing and a groom thing. I don't want this horse going over three weeks any longer. But as far as making breaks in the turns, this horse couldn't be more sure-footed. Sure, I could see a little change, a few changes we could make. But for the most part, I was okay with sometimes things happen. He was weak the last quarter. He was... The last half of that mile and a half, he was hurting. But at the same time, I'd warmed him up pretty hard also. So we'll give him that. Let's treat him with some Baycocks and move forward with sometimes things happen. Not really a big deal. 
him and really blue chip are getting that tomorrow i think that's about it uh time will dazzle another one i gotta start going with she got fell back into one of her lazy ruts i saw her today and he's out jogging her easy for the mile i said no that's not gonna happen so time all dazzle uh no i don't need to go there tomorrow but she's i'm gonna go there next time she goes no that's a lie friday i'm not here next wednesday i will be going with her um wiggle delight yeah no that's good so uh that's that over with let's run through um the best ones of the day the ones that were good and there are a few more i would say the one that put the biggest smile on my face and you're welcome andrew chaletsky uh miss mischief maker miss mischief maker i put her in an easy group because as i said to you she missed those three weeks and it's hard it's hard to get back into shape after standing in a stall for three weeks that's hard to do and I didn't know how long it would take. And not going to take too much longer, is it? I moved her twice in the last half of the mile and a half. And she inhaled Tiamo Hanover coming out of the turn. Now, Tiamo Hanover is green. And he hasn't had the same training our horses are. Tiamo Hanover is going through his mile saying, are we done yet? When everybody else knows where the finish line is. And you can be sure Miss Mischief Maker does. She looked some good today, didn't she? Finished up like a champ. And looked really, really good. Enduring strength. This horse looks serious today. Last week I told you he looked good. This looked like a serious horse today. Even better than I thought he was. Enduring strength looked very, very good this morning. Very impressed with him. Beach Boutique, brush cut. How good did they look today? Brush cut first over in a grind position and just wore them down into dirt. And he looked very, very good. As I said, Beach Boutique was very good. That was a big last half and that windy cold first set. Ooh -hoo. She was very, very good. Globe trotting, probably one of the best looking horses of the day. Uh, really, really impressed with the way this filly's come on. And for those of you who have any vested interest in her or that like watching her go, you know what I'm talking about. This filly looks serious. She looks really, really good now. Harness AM was very good this morning. Just for me and you. I said this in the drone. Go back and watch the drone and listen to me talk during the drone. Um, no. No, no, apparently I'm not allowed to decline it or, there we go. Um, when you go back and look, I'm trying to explain what Just For Me and You is doing. Just For Me and You is very rare intelligence. She has a very rare intelligence in the fact that most trotters, when you put them in a bad position in the turns, they'll make breaks. They will. If you let a horse, a trotter, accelerate in a turn, get out of gear, get twisted around, it, the horse will just break. Nine times out of 10, that's exactly what will happen. Just for me and you is smart enough to know when Max is Max. And as, he, as we get into the turn, she accelerated a little bit, and then you saw her slow down a little bit in the middle of the turn. Trotters don't do that. Not usually. Certainly smart ones do, but not usually as a rule. This filly's smart enough to understand what she can and cannot do. And as soon as we come out of the turn, gone again. You can see in the last turn, I had to let that horse go by me, and we come out of the turn, she trotted as hard as she could right down the stretch. That's just smart. That's just really intelligent. And um, she's getting better. If you look at her video two weeks ago, had a sorts a little bit. Made a couple of breaks on a line running in. We put a Murphy blind and a head pull on her. And we worked with her. She looks much, much better now. Big, big step back forward for just for me and you today. Very, very happy with what I saw from her. I'm always happy with what I saw from Knockdown Dragout. She was tired finishing up. Big last half. Very, very cold. Very windy. They probably shouldn't have come big last half like that. But they did. And again, she gritted it out and uh, just a true competitor. This is just, there's no way to deny it. It's almost May. Knockdown drag out has week in and week out been her best two-year-old trotter. And I would say Miss Mischief Maker probably on the pacing side. Or not Miss Mischief Maker, I'm sorry. Miss Brampton Beast. They always show up. They always look good and they look great today. Leading into Miss Brampton Beast. How good was she? I told you guys we were going to start throttling back the Ontario breads. And we we're pulling up, and here he goes, thought you were throttling back these Ontario breads. I said, come a half and 20, mile and 21 after Abby goes, you were three wide there. I said, yeah. I was sitting way at the back, and I put her in gear and looped the field with Marazan Canover. I didn't talk about Marazan Canover. I'm going to put her on my list. Um, Miss Brampton Beast was very, was Miss Brampton Beast. She's the same way she always was. I made the front with Marzan Canover. She cleared. I finished up strong, but I couldn't get to Miss Miss or to Miss Brampton Beast. They don't want any part of this filly right now. Not on our farm. She she's really good. She's uh, she's the queen of the Pacers right now. That's for sure. 
and uh, Marzank Hanover finished up behind her and looked good. There was a couple other ones in there that looked good also. But the Ontario Breds, if you look, the set was slower and there was a lot of movement. I want a lot of movement and a lot less speed out of the Ontario Breds for the next month. And that's exactly what you're going to see. Virtually that set, take in or out a couple other horses. Um, but that's how I want those horses training for the next month. Uh, we talked about Miss Mischief Maker, how good she looked. Uh, Path of Totality, awesome today. And Ricky's always saying she's on a line, she's on this line, she's on that line. Made a few little changes, put a jawbreaker a controller on her, put a little bipper on the outside of her. She was A1 today, uh, really trotting hard through the whole mile. Looked very, very good. Very, very happy with Path of Totality. Rooney Blue Chip, changed his gear, really tightened his hobbles up. They were really tight today, but he did his work. And he was strong finishing up. And I think once his confidence level grows, that colt, we can start letting those hobbles back out. They're going to stay tight for a little while on him. He was very strong today. What about Sebastian Yu? I said to James, just try and keep him quiet, will you? Just try and keep him quiet and uh, have him finish up his mile good. He was all business today. But he was quiet in the hole, right? Just He's just, he just getting there quicker. You know, he was really raw maybe a month ago, maybe five weeks ago, when he really started to show us he had talent, he was still raw. Make breaks in weird places, really get hot, pull. You know, we put a snake cord on him, put a hood on him. He sat in the hole today, quiet. I went by him down the back stretch. He wheeled out, and he was flying down the lane. Spe uh, Sebastian, you very, very good. Spend that money, look good again today. James said, not quite as good as she was the other day. You can't, she's no good in idle, right? And she was in with horses. She was just going to um, annihilate. And... James was just kind of letting her float. She's not a floater. She's a worker. You put her in gear, she looks great. If you let her coast out of gear, she just looks adequate. And she was good today. Very, very good. Happy with what I saw. So that's really an update on a lot of things that went on today. All the other horses went pretty good. No standouts. Maybe I missed a couple. Havana, oh, no, no, race good. Or train good. Beach Bum BB train good. Bend over his hobbles. If you listen to the commentary, I said, there's no way this horse is going to trot. Well, his hobbles this long, he was perfect. Look good again today. Capistrano went a big last mile. She was good. Uh, Classy Will. Classy Will looked good again today. I trained him really hard two days ago. He was back in two days and he looked good again today. Uh, crazy Mission. Mario said he was much, much better with the shoeing change we made. Maybe hope there yet. Uh, who else? Don't Believe Me Just Watch. Kevin was happy with. Emerald Miss looked okay. Excellent Nation was okay. Fox Valley Shazam. Uh, Fuss Pot was a little flat. Uh, Giddy Up Max was good. Right line needs a little bit of gear put on him. Uh, I said Havana Unana. All Play It Alone was strong. Inland Beach was strong. Jalos Master, decent. Um, McPherson Thunder went well. A bunch of horses on here. Uh, Muscle Chrome, her hobbles were a little tight, but she was sound, which is good. We're on the right track. We're going to keep moving forward with Big Chrome Philly. Need Your Opinion was very, very good again. Really Blue Chip. Rooney Blue Chip. We talked about him. Roser and Valiant. Roser and Versatile made a break. Uh, I don't know why. I'm not going to push her too hard. She's trying to find her way. She was real good the other day. She just wasn't awesome today. Made a little break, and uh, I'm sure she'll bounce back just fine from that. What else? Um, Sebastian Ray, they went a big last half, and he was first over. He didn't want any part of that. That's no problem. He's not used to that yet, right? You really got to help them, uh, really have to help them push forward. And Sebastian you, Sebastian Ray has been great all along. No concerns there. Uh, Spirit of Dio, we talked about her. Sunshine and Shade was good. Susie K made a little break. Just her hobbles were too long. Tiamo Hanover was good. Trafalgar was pretty good. I'm going to go with her next week. I want to know what's going on with her. Time of Dazzle, a little flat. She just kind of getting a little complacent. Uh, yours if you want, it's going tomorrow. Utopian's going tomorrow. Watch Ev's coming back from the field tomorrow. Wiggle Delight made a little break, but was pretty good, and I think we fixed that. I talked about that at the start. Willpower Fashion was decent, as was Zub Sunshine. So, that's everything for today. I'll give you another update uh, as we get into the weekend. But for today, that's it. That's all. Get a little uh, video about everything that took place today. Tomorrow, White Tiger is schooling tomorrow. So is Casanova's Jewel. Uh, they're both schooling tomorrow. Screaming Hawks qualifying tomorrow. Sunshine's Finest is qualifying tomorrow. I'm missing somebody at Harry's. Screaming Hawks, Sunshine's Finest. Mm, ah, I hate when that happens. Something else qualifying at Harry's Barn. I'm positive of that. War We Ultra is qualifying tomorrow. A um, couple more schooling. Kevin has uh, Cruising and Styles. Soon going to be schooling. 
and uh, obviously we're schooling uh, Taimo Houdini. He entered the Lazex program and he won't be able to race till next Thursday. So that's everything. That's everything I got for you. If tomorrow's great, we'll give you a qualifying update, qualifying report, and an update on how White Tiger went. And uh, May 11th, May 12th is almost upon us. A lot going on, a lot to do, a lot happening. Talk to you guys soon. Take care.